Hello and welcome. Welcome to Sunday Morning Coffee with Karen, episode 65. Oh my goodness, episode 65. Hi everyone, welcome. Sunday Morning Coffee with Karen, episode 65. We are here, we are live, ready to rock and roll. Talking about today's topic is about accepting support in an ultra independent world, society. So, just make sure that everything is connected. Make sure you say hi. We're going to start the way that we do every day. Also, happy new full moon in Gemini. So lunar eclipse happening later today. So we're going to set our intention for clear communication, that the channel will be open, that everything is said in the highest love, the highest good of all beings across all time, space, and dimensions. And also lighting our incense if you have sage palo santo incense anything that you want to add i know that this is a weekly live stream but everything that i do is always in ritual always in communion with the divine will of all that is <laughs> and bringing the polarities into the singularity creating a sacred space a sacred container a sacred time for us to to spend together today Perfect. So just put that there. Awesome. So ultra independence. <laughs> Anyone suffer from this? <laughs> Anyone out there just be like, you know what? Fuck this. I'm just going to do it myself because if I do it, then at least it'll get done right. Right. I, nobody's going to do it the way that I'm going to do it. So I might as well just do it myself. Yeah. Give me some hearts. Give me some likes. I love loves, I love likes, I love all the things. Um, let me know, are you someone that's like me? Are you someone who has that ultra independence trauma bond? It's a trauma response, actually. So we're going to be talking about that a little bit. And then I really wanted to start by explaining a little bit more about what it is that I do. Um, I'm a structural integration specialist. So I work on the body in the massage that I do uh, with myofascial release. And I've been able to take that and move it into all four bodies. So creating a solid structure and a solid foundation within the spiritual, mental, emotional, and physical bodies so that you can really truly reclaim your divinity and resource your own divinity and be your own psychic, to be your own healer, to be your own channel. Yep, Aaron has the trauma, the ultra independence. Um, so ultra independence is usually created when you are, well, it is created. It's created in the first seven years of life. And it's a response to the people in your life and feeling like they just were not there to be able to give you the support that you needed. Or maybe you were told as a young child, like, go do it yourself. You can do that yourself. You're a big girl. You can do it yourself. You go do it yourself. And you started to create this story that if you asked for help, you weren't going to get it and you were going to be told to just do it yourself anyway. Or you would pick up on the nonverbal cues from your parents or your caretaker that somehow you asking for help and support was annoying to them. Like, oh, fine, I'll get up off the couch. Oh, fine, I'll stop doing what I'm doing to help you. Even if helping you was like getting you a snack right? You're this three-year-old kid. You can't reach the snacks on the top shelf. You know, you're not supposed to be trying to climb by yourself. You go ask your mom and dad for help and they're in the middle of doing something. You're going to pick up on those nonverbal cues that tell you that somehow you're annoying them. Like you're, you're an inconvenience. And then this continues forward as we go through our school years. Maybe you had a project due, right? Like I can clearly remember having like a group project. I was probably in like third grade. And the agreement was that we were each going to do our part. We were going to come together at the day of the presentation and we were going to do our presentation. And in those school projects, you know, everyone participating affects the other people's grades. And I remember that I got like the lowest grade possible because I was the only one that actually did my part of the work. So we had four pieces and only one of the four was done. And so we all got a low grade. And unlike the other people who were in my group, I would get, um, 
I would get punished for having low grades. If I had anything below a B minus, I was grounded. When I was, you know, in elementary school, those were like one, twos, and threes. So if I was getting a two or a one, then I wasn't supposed to, I wasn't allowed to go hang out with my friends. I was expected to have essentially a 4.0 grade average from the time that I was in first grade. And so I'd stop trusting. I remember like after that, if I ever had a group project, I'd be like, nope, I'll just do it. And I would do the entire project and I would give everyone their notes and I would make sure that it was on point because I was the one that was going to get punished. I was the one that was going to lose my free time with my friends if other people didn't show up and do the work because maybe their parents didn't give a fuck and they're like, yeah, as long as you don't flunk out of high school or I don't care, you know, as long as you don't have an F. Um, I'm an only child. So a lot of extra pressure on me. And these are all things now that I can go back and see and have that objective lens like, oh, that's why I have this response. So accepting support in any area is actually super difficult, but we're going to break this down on a body level first, okay? Support in the physical body. So I am a singer and actress. This is something that I love to do. Singing is one of those passions that's really coming forward. I'm actually creating a new album right now. It's going to be coming out in beginning of February, hopefully late January of next year. Um, and my voice has been shifting and changing over the last couple of years as I've been singing again. And I realized that I needed more support. It's breath support, right? So we're going to talk a little bit about breath and how that idea of breath and the idea of, um, of support that way. But does anyone else, you know, I see Chris is here. Yeah. So I feel like that like gives you the good example of like what that ultra tr ultra independent streak is right another piece of that before we move on to the breath work and the body support and how how we need to get support in all four bodies is you then make that choice like you trust someone right you you trust someone implicitly maybe it was one of your friends and you told them a secret and you're like okay you pinky promised you weren't going to tell anything and then you find out that they haven't just told one person they told the whole school about whatever it was that you were sharing with them well not only have you now lost your ability to trust other people you actually are losing trust within yourself to make good choices about the people that you trust, right? So this ultra independence actually baseline is a lack of trust within yourself. You don't trust yourself. You don't trust that you know how to make good decisions. You don't trust that you know how to trust people, like to make good decisions and the people that you trust. You don't trust that anyone is able to do things as good as you. And yet you barely trust your ability to do things well. Okay, so ultra independence is a huge, 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 huge trauma response that we have from really those early childhood years when we were learning how to trust, right? When we were learning how to how to accept support from other people. And and for me, that's honestly like the number one block that I come across with my clients is their inability to accept support. They don't even hiring me can be like the biggest thing that they've ever done. I've had multiple clients literally throw up after paying their payment to me because they're just so freaked out because I'm able to hold that space, right? It's not that I tell you what to create or how to even create it. It's that I believe in you 100% that you can absolutely have the life of your dreams, no matter how crazy or insane it sounds, right? That's how my clients are able to go from having, you know, barely barely making it with five figure clients, you know, barely feeling comfortable charging 10 K for a six month client to charging a hundred thousand dollars for a 90 K client in like an eight week span, how these women are able to go from feeling so shut down and so turned off and like, so ashamed about their bodies to being full on orgasmic bliss, you know, goddesses in a few short weeks. It's cause I want you to have your dreams come true but you have to have the ability to get that support from me, right? To actually trust that I'm able to support you, even though I might be a little bit unconventional, a little witchy, a little metaphysical, right? Well, a lot of all those, right? Okay. Well, let's come back to the breath. The breath, hmm, the breath being the prana of life, right? We can't survive without breathing. We know this. Our hearts beat and oxygen is pumped throughout our bodies. Our lungs breathe. So we need that breath. So if we just think about how we normally breathe, most people breathe up here very shallow. And it's all short, shallow breaths. And they almost 
feel like they can't ever catch their breath, it's because they're only using literally like the top third or less of their lung capacities. Your lungs are like this big and they sit in your rib cage and you have a diaphragm that pulls down. So when you're breathing, it doesn't have to be a big Buddha belly breath. Like when you're in yoga and they tell you to like really expand your belly, it doesn't have to be that, but you should feel your rib cage expand right to left and also expand front to back. So in four ways, right? So you see me breathing, you notice that my shoulders versus, which is how most people breathe, to a, my shoulders aren't really moving that much, right? They're moving a little bit when I get to the very end and at the very beginning, but it's not this big obvious. So you want people walking around like this and they're breathing. It's because they're so constricted and it's because they don't feel like they can get a supported breath. So in the physical body, when we're doing structural myofascial release, we start with the rib cage actually and opening the rib cage and moving the rib cage back on top of the pelvis. Mentally, in the mental body, what you're doing is allowing yourself to be supported in your ideas and your endeavors. So being supported, I have this big dream. I have no idea how I'm going to create it but I trust that it's going to be done. And this might be trust in the universe. This might be trust in your own intuition. This might be trust in a coach. It might be trusting in your partner that they actually want to help you and that they do actually want to give you that love and support that you need. But when you have this trauma bond, when you have this belief system that you can't even trust yourself, you can't even support yourself with the way that you breathe or the way that you stand, Right? So how many of you right now are realizing that you're looking at your phone and you're looking at it like this? Right? Reclaim your divinity through your posture, ladies and gentlemen. So you want to shine your heart out. You want to tuck that head. You want to feel that support, a little bit of core engagement, and really own, like take up space, right? Trust that it's safe for you to take up space. Okay? These are all still support based things. We don't support our own bodies and then wonder why we're walking around in all sorts of pain all the time. Or I can't even go get a massage because they hurt so bad. So in the mental plane, so physical body, it's our actual posture, right? We don't accept actual support in our posture. We don't stand in great alignment. The way that I always explain it is imagine um, if you've ever seen like a king or a queen on their coronation day, right? They have the big ass crown that's like this and big and huge and it sits on their head like this. And then they've got the big mantle or cloak that's like super long, the super long robe that has the big furs and it's made out of like heavy fabric. And then women, they're wearing these big garters. Men even are wearing this like full suit and then they're wearing the shoes and everything. How do you have to hold yourself? How does your posture need to be to be able to walk around with those those things, right? It's the reason why we used to have, you know, have um, in fancier, um, like upper class, right? They'd walk around and they'd have their their um, etiquette classes, right? And they have to walk around with the book on their head. Oh, can I balance this book on my head, or am I gonna let it slip, right? So a lot of people are doing this. They're walking around all day and their crowns are just slipping off their head. But if they just were to raise their chin just a little bit, just a little bit, you can get the book to balance, right? And you can just practice just doing this, like practice balancing a book the next time that you're doing work on your computer, right? Can you sit here like this and be typing and do all of the things that need to be done? Um, when you're making dinner, right? And it seems so awkward, right? When I'm holding the book, it seems like I'm really trying to force it, but it's not that I really change or shift that much at all when I'm not wearing the book because I've trained myself to be supported in that way, right? It relieves a lot of your neck pressure. All of these things that we don't realize that we are not allowing our own bodies to support us and then wondering why we're not getting support. We don't even support ourselves, right? We're not taking deep breaths. 
We're not aligning our posture. We're not accepting that we actually have the answers. So that'd be something in the mental like, oh, I already know how to do this. I am very capable of doing this. I don't really know how I'm going to do this, but I know that I'm capable, that I am strong, that I trust myself to be able to get it done. And then moving on to the emotional support, right? Can you support yourself through those really hard times? Can you allow yourself to cry? Okay, this is a huge thing for my clients. They don't cry um, ever. Like even the female clients, they come to me, they're like, oh, I don't cry. That's not a thing for me, right? There are a lot of really hard ass CEOs out there that had to make it in a male world and that causes them to then lose touch with the emotions because we're taught from again a young age that emotions are bad that they don't support us that they that we need to always just use our logical mind and we don't allow our emotions to be our teachers to get that support from our emotions if you're angry then that's there's a something going on that needs to be listened to within your body right and then you can go even deeper, you know, into the acupressure, the acupuncture, all of those things, the meridians of the body, seeing like, oh, well, I always have this pain on my right side of my body. Well, that's the liver. And then you wonder why you end up having liver sclerosis or whatever and all these problems. And you were just angry. You never had a chance to really release your anger because it wasn't supported in your household. You weren't supported in your emotions when you were growing up. So you have all four bodies, the mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual body that need that support and learning how to support yourself. I have yet to meet a client that actually knew how to do that. They thought that they were supported. They're like, oh no, I have a team. They do all these things for me, blah, blah, blah. But then you go and you actually start asking the team or you start asking them, you know, the person themselves, well, what happens in this? And you find out that this person who is so supported is actually a fucking micromanager. <laughs> right so it doesn't matter that they've got a team of 10 people that work for them they're still burning the candle on both ends super in their masculine super in their in their their wounded masculine well disempowered right it's not that you're wounded okay i'm really 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 trying to not use that term wounded masculine or wounded feminine because that's very victimy it's just that you're not in your empowered feminine or your empowered masculine yet you're still clinging to old structures so one of those things is saying okay i'm gonna get an assistant and then always double checking her work right like i can't trust her i can't trust anyone i can't even trust myself to know that i made the right decision in the assistant that i hired okay these are super base things that we all need to be looking at. Can you look throughout your day at your structure of how you're walking, how you're standing? When you land, are you standing like all concave and curled in with the hip all popped out? Or are you able to stand and land and know, yep, my crown is on, my cloak is out, I'm wearing my bodice, you know, and I'm not someone that's like, go get a whalebone bodice, but trust me, you wear one of those for one fucking day, all of a sudden you have a mad respect for all the women that came before you dang those things are intense right i remember even just my wedding dress being like holy shit this corset is insane and yeah we know that there's like some structural things that kind of got fucked up because the corset was what was holding it but can you have your own corset can you like engage your core in its own way right in a way that allows you to be elongated. It's a lot of this has to do with trusting that you are allowed to take up space, right? Taking up as much space as possible so that your energy isn't blocked in any way. You have your arms, your legs. I'm six feet tall, guys. Like, trust me, I get it when you're like, I don't really want to take up space. I used to be able to bend and contort myself down to about a five, seven range just by popping out my hip and rotating my spine and then popping my shoulders. So it never looked like I was all super curvy, but I was totally super curvy. The way that I stood with my legs a little bit wider, all of these things that were not supportive. And then I wondered, oh, well, why did I get fibromyalgia when I was 20 years old? Well, it's because I had no support in any of my bodies. I didn't trust that I was smart. I didn't believe it. I never applied for college. I didn't do anything like that. I always just assumed that I was the worst at anything. Even when I would get good grades, I wouldn't reward myself. I would just look at the parts that I had done wrong. So I was very, very, very negatively focused. I was only ever focused on what was bad. Um, in my body, again, I had 36 G breasts. I was six feet tall. I had these big old goofy glasses, frizzy hair, and 
also being very, um, you know, pansexual in the fact that I never felt very girly, but I also wasn't really a tomboy. Like I wanted to be girly, but I didn't think that I had the features for it. I didn't trust anything about who I was. I didn't know who I was. I was this shape-shifting chameleon that was just trying to fit in anywhere that I could, right? And if you've studied Brene Brown, our goal isn't to fit in. Our goal is to truly belong. And the way that you truly belong is to belong to yourself and to not have to justify who you are to anyone, including those people that have been around you for years and years and years. You don't need to justify who you are. You just need to show up as who you are and be able to support yourself in that, right? And it can get really frustrating if you're trying to support yourself and you're being surrounded by people that you can tell on some level don't actually support you. Either they have their own fears that you're, you know, their own abandonment issues, their own trauma responses, their own ultra independence, that they're like, oh, well, I don't see how you're ever going to do that. Um, you know, I need you to be this sort of person, this, that, and the other. And you, you don't realize that even that is then reaffirming to you that you don't deserve to be supported in the way that you want. You can ask for the support and be told that you're supported, but then you, you leave the room and they're immediately thinking all these negative thoughts. And now their thoughts are imprinted into your own, own thing that you were trying to create. So how do you accept this, right? I've now talked for 20 minutes about how, why it exists and how it shows up in our lives. How do you correct this? How you correct it is by starting, and it sounds cliche, it's starting with the breath. Can you allow yourself to take a nice deep breath all the way in and feel supported by it? Baby, you yawn. I know when I was first picking up singing lessons again, I would spend half of the lesson yawning because I wasn't getting enough breath for my singing. I couldn't project my voice out very loudly at all without it cracking and then having to take all these extra sips of air. And now I can sustain a note for a lot longer without having to sip air, but it's still hard. It's still hard. It's one of those lessons that I have not mastered yet, and I'm still in the process of self-mastery with that. Support in how you're standing. Again, can you walk around and have that feeling in your body that you really can shine your chest out, that you can hold your shoulders back and flat, that you can hold your head high, that you're not looking down on anyone just because you're holding your chin up, right? And the emotional, can you allow yourself to feel all the feelings? I tell you this all the time, an emotion only lasts 90 seconds, right? From the thought being triggered to the emotion being, the hormones and um, biochemicals being released into your bloodstream to it circulating through your entire body, an emotion really only lasts 90 seconds. So can you support yourself through 90 seconds of pain and cry it out? Can you support yourself through 90 seconds of anger and just get pissed? Can you support yourself through 90 seconds of happiness, right? Maybe being sad and angry isn't your problem. It's being happy. You don't know how to do that. You don't know how to allow yourself to laugh because you don't trust that it's going to stay, right? You're always looking for the other shoe to drop. You're always looking for the next fuck up. You're always going to look, you're always looking for how is this going to be taken away from me, right? Can you trust that you get to be happy? Can you be supported in your bliss? Can you start experiencing sensations in your body as turn on instead of turn off, right? Can you allow yourself to get off on every stroke, realizing that everything that happens in your life is a stroke and that you are, in essence, a giant clitoris <laughs> that gets to decide if that stroke feels good or if that stroke feels bad. And if you're a woman, I would suggest you go start doing some orgasmic meditation if you don't really know what I'm talking about because it's an amazing practice to help you get that. Like You can have the worst day ever and still get to be happy at the end of it. You get to still choose how it is that you're experiencing life at all times. You can have a super intense, sad, like you're just so angry and you're crying and you don't really understand why, but by the end of it, feel this release and this relief and say, you know what? I still choose to be happy today. I still choose that this is the best day of my life. What could my best day look like? And if you're focused on happiness and 
pleasure and laughter and love, you're going to get more of that. But if you wake up every day just like, okay, well, what shitty thing's going to happen to me today? Oh, how, what bill's going to come up? What's this? Oh, I don't have any new clients. Oh shit. No one signed up for my, this, that, and the other. Like you're not supporting your dream because you're always belittling how it hasn't happened yet. Right. You're always, you, you say that you have this dream and yet you're constantly caught up on the fact that you haven't had it yet. Moving that into the mental being like, okay, well, my thoughts are things, right? My thoughts are things. So I can stop wondering when this is going to happen and just know what's going to happen. The same way that we know that Christmas is on December 25th all over the planet. Maybe not everyone celebrates it. Maybe not everyone knows it, but we know it. It's December 25th every year. Can you know that your dream life is already happening and therefore feel supported where you are now? Knowing that where you are now is the version of you that gets to what it is that you desire. Okay, so that's how in the mental plane you can start supporting yourself. To stop questioning why I don't have it now. And instead start asking, okay, well, what what could I do today? Or how can I already feel into this? How can I already accept within my body that I do have this dream already created? And then in the spiritual, how do you support yourself there? you create rituals, right? You are constantly in communication with the divine. You are treating every moment of every day as if you're in church, not in a, a closed off holier than thou situation in a reverence, right? I'm in reverence right now. I am, I bless my water before I drink it. I light a candle every time before I go live, unless I'm like impromptu living from my phone. And even then I still set the space energetically. Um, when I'm with my kids, when I do anything, I'm trying to stay in this vibration of holy communion, being in communion with my divine self at all times so that I know that I am saying the right things. Even if I'm having hard conversations, even if I'm having difficult conversations with those people that I love, I'm still doing, and I get emotional and I start crying or I start getting pissed. I still know that whatever is happening is in alignment with my highest good because I'm constantly in the body feel, right, of feeling supported, right? This is a body feeling support. You guys are going to get used to me talking a whole lot more about the body because that's where we lose it. So many people are up here constantly in the mental, just in the mental. Do you understand? Does this make sense? Does you want it? I don't care if it makes sense to you. Do you feel it? Can you feel the knowing within your body that you deserve everything that you could ever dream of? Because that's the freedom frequency. That's what I teach. That's where I live and where I want more people to live. Because when more of us are focused on this frequency, this energy, we're going to have a chance to actually chip, tip over global consciousness and move the entire planet from fear to freedom. I actually have a fucking plan for that. It's not just a hopefully one day this will happen. It is my divine mission. Eight billion people moving from fear to freedom. Eight billion people going from lack and scarcity and not knowing what's going to happen next to knowing no matter what that they are divinely supported and always, always. I have big visions giant ones that actually terrify the fuck out of me most of the time. But I know it's going to happen so I can have gratitude for this day, this November 29th, when I get to show up and talk to you guys for 30 minutes about receiving support. Receiving support is so hard because we don't actually believe we're worth having the support. And then we have to realize that worthiness, that's a mental construct. How do you know when you're worthy? When you decide you are, that's it. It's literally it. It's simply a decision. And it can be difficult. It can be difficult to have someone look at you after years and years and years and years of you not trusting, of you not believing, of getting fucked over, over and over and over again, to actually trust someone when they say, I support you no matter what. I'm by your side. I just want you to be happy. I just want you to feel that what you're doing is worthwhile because I believe in your vision too. I believe that what you're doing is amazing. And when that happens, you're probably going to get slammed with a whole bunch of questions and you're going to have to choose whether you're going to stick to your trauma story of ultra independence or if you're going to accept that love and support. And then you're going to watch, if you choose to accept the love and support, watch how it multiplies. 
so quickly. It's insane how fast your life can change when you finally accept support and stop micromanaging your life. Stop trying to do everything yourself. You don't have to do everything yourself. In fact, you're not ever doing anything by yourself because you're always in connection with the all, with the divine, if you choose to be. And you're always in connection with your own higher heart. You're always in connection with your intuition. And the more you develop these skills, just like any other muscles, just like doing core exercises is going to help you hold your chest up more. Just like doing glute exercises is going to help support your lower back more. The same way that doing, you know, neck stretches is going to help you hold your head more. Those are all little things that you can do that will support your physical body. Eating healthy, stretching, getting lots of sleep, right? We talk about all of this in the Accelerated Ascension Boot Camp where I explain all four bodies. Even just taking a risk and purchasing that, right? Right now this week, I have this until Monday, tomorrow night at midnight, all three of my courses that I teach, the Pillars of Freedom with the Trifecta of Success and the Manifesto of Freedom, the Accelerated Ascension Boot Camp, six videos, one workbook, amazing stuff about all four bodies and how to actually embody your divine mission, the Freedom Frequency Shift, which is an eight module course that has another amazing workbook about how to actually walk yourself from fear to freedom step by step through that framework that includes an amazingly awesome potent mp3 that's been coded with living consciousness to be in your eardrums and so that you can create a body feel all of those if you were to go on my website and try to buy them alone it'd be 898 for the next 24 hours a little over 24 hours they're 333 dollars that's the biggest sale i've ever had and i might never have it again and it's because i want to support you 11 people are watching right now I want to support you. I want to be able to do this. I would love to be able to just give everything to you for free. But what I've noticed is that people who give things for free don't actually value what it is that they've been given. I know this because I have over 400 hours of free videos. And yet there are people that have been watching me for years that are still in the same spot that they were in when they first found me in 2018. Because there's no energy exchange with all the freebies, right? I've been a freebie freeloader. Trust me, my inbox is filled with PDFs that I never looked at. I, it's even filled with courses I've never looked at, let's be honest. But when I actually can feel that that person that I'm purchasing from genuinely wants to support me, you bet your ass I go through that course. And I follow it and I learn what I need and I let go of what doesn't serve. And I move forward and it's how I've been able to completely transform my life in two years. It's how I've been able to completely transform my life in two months. Guys, I am constantly changing. This is one thing that I'm starting to teach more people, trying to explain that this embodiment of the goddess, this embodiment of the Holy Mother, this embodiment of all that can be is an ever-changing thing. That's what the divine feminine really is. She's the changing. She's the tide. She's the moving. And the structure is the fact that I still live in a physical body, right? I have belief systems. I have, uh, you know, I have my word and I keep my word. I have those impeccable standards that I keep with supreme integrity because I radically trust that I am always in alignment with my highest good for the highest good of all people. That's it. That's, that's, that's it right there. You want to know what the, what the trifecta of success is? That's it. Impeccable standards held in supreme integrity because I radically trust that I am divinely guided. That's how my life has always, what it lacked. That's the structure. You have to have a manifesto. You have to have something that truly connects you in all levels to who it is that you want to be. Who is it that you really want to be and how can you start showing up as that? Because who you are now is supporting who you are becoming. It's all combined. It's all together. It's all mixed up and squished together in all of this, okay? It is really difficult to sometimes have to, to be the person that's explaining this to you guys because I know that it can be hard pills to swallow right? It can be really difficult to hear that you maybe haven't been showing up the way that you need to. But when you understand why, you understand that there's this old, old pattern of ultra independence, right? We live in a society that praises independence, right? Go out, 
the American dream, go out and hustle and grind, go do it yourself. You had all of these things happen for you. Go get divorced, right? Like tons of people just getting divorced because, oh, well, I'm a grown ass woman. I don't need no man. Instead of allowing their man to support them, the one that already did support them through everything that they've been through. But as soon as they get successful, just like no one's supporting the men, which is the reason why I don't only work with women because I understand men. I understand them. And I actually have a new business partner that I'm bringing on to help even more because I want there to be super conscious men as well as super conscious women. I want there to be a whole fucking planet of super conscious leaders, right? But I'm calling out the leaders right now to actually show the fuck up to stop hiding in your echo chambers and to actually do the work necessary to clear these trauma bonds of ultra independence of having to be on your own. We're here. It takes a village to raise a child. And I'm here to hopefully, no, nope, not hopefully. I know it in my bones deep, deep down that I'm here to create that village, to create that new earth, to actually build the structures, to build these crystalline cities so that, you have a choice between living in fear and living in freedom, and it's no longer just a hopefully one day, right? Hopefully one day someone's going to save me and help me and let me into new earth. No, I'm building it for you. I'm building it. I'm building it because it's my mission. It's what I was made to do, and it starts by helping you with the structure of your own body. Can you be in alignment with your own body? Can you allow yourself to get the support? <sighs> of a deep breath. Can you allow yourself to be supported by the emotions that you're feeling as a human? We come to this planet to experience emotions. You don't experience it. Go to Octorius, go to Cirrus, go to the Pleiades. You're not going to have emotions. They don't have them there. Humans have emotions. So we're here to learn and to be supported by our emotions. But so many people are cut off from them. They don't have a safe space to be held to feel those emotions. Mentally, we allow ourselves to dream big, but then we don't ever actually embody it. We don't actually feel that. Yeah. And if we do have a team that we do finally get, we don't trust it. Either we're channeling and we're like, oh, well, maybe I'm not really talking to the Octarian Council. Maybe I'm not really talking to my higher self. Let me double check this through my logic brain. But your logical brain will never understand the levels of super consciousness that I teach for sure. You have to get very much into your right brain to understand the Kundalini and the fact that you are the Kundalini. It's not an external force. It's very right brain. It's, it's extremely um, in here. <laughs> Right? I can't even use words to describe it. And going around and micromanaging the team that you have is not actually having support, right? You have to be able to go to your accountant and put the information in and trust that she knows what the fuck she's doing instead of going back through and double checking all her work. I'm not saying don't double check her a little bit, you know, make sure that things are correct here and there, but the micromanagement right? The, I'm going to hire a team, but then still always be telling my team what to do. That's not, that's still that same ultra independent streak, right? And if you're really ready to move forward and get that foundation of freedom, then go ahead and get yourself into uh, grabbing the eclipse sale that I have going on right now. I just left the link on Facebook, Instagram. It's in my bio, $333. It's literally 62% off to get all three of my courses that I created for you to have the support, right? It's, it's what I live and breathe supporting you in your vision, supporting you to be able to create your wildest dreams come true, to have the happiest, healthiest, most brilliant, wealthiest, most successful, most loving life that you can imagine. And then wait and see how much more you can actually stand to have. I have an amazing husband and two beautiful children, two, three, I have three beautiful children an amazing husband. My parents are so supportive. I have a best friend who's now becoming my business partner who literally would follow me to the ends of the earth. Every single one of them would. But I have to be able to stand up and say, I'm leading these people to the ends of the world. So I better know what the fuck I'm doing. And I don't have a roadmap. I'm 
literally making this up as I go along. But I know it in my bones. I have the feeling, right? The gut feeling, the knowing in my heart, knowing in my pussy, the knowing in every fiber of my being that I am here to create heaven on earth and that I can show you the way how to create it too because it's what I was born to do. So I hope this was a good uh, episode for you guys. Let me know if this was useful, helpful. It's going to be uploaded to the YouTube channel. I love you all. Make sure that you grab the eclipse sale. You know, it's a lunar eclipse today and it's Gemini. Today is a day to dream big. And we are having a ritual inside Super Conscious Leaders, the Facebook group. If you're not in there, make sure you get in there too. I will leave it in the comments as well. Facebook.com slash groups. Super Conscious Leaders. If you're not in the group yet, make sure you're in there. We're going to be doing a live at 5 p.m. A ritual for Dreaming Big to really fully come into that divine union with yourself so that you can have that unified will necessary to create magic, to create heaven on earth, to live in a constant stream of miracles, which is to live in the freedom frequency. So I love you. Have a beautiful day. And I will talk to you next week. Bye.